the thing too. While I was like my last quarter of school, like I faced so many people, uh, so many people telling me like, 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 what are you gonna do, animation or dance? You can't do both. This is kind of in relation to you doing other things. Did you ever break away from your uh, time with dance to pursue another career? And if so, what was that career and why? Did I ever break? Mm. I know you told me about something and I was surprised. So, <laughs> I mean, I never, okay. Oh, you're talking about when I was a gamer, a gamer yeah. and working in the gaming okay. industry. That one? Mm. Yeah. What I else never, did you do? I, as a career? Dance has always been a, what do you call it, a, a constant in my life. Everything, uh, mm -hmm. like the, the career choices were kind of different, but dance has always been there somehow, somehow or some way. Okay, Max. <laughs> um, yeah, I, for, I've never had to break away from it, but even when I was working prior to old dancing and prior to Vision Paradox um, and when I was working in the game industry and animation industry, and what, what, I, I, was still, I, was still I was still driving to, to Alhambra to teach class. Oh my gosh. So t can you tell us, can you explain to us what you were doing aside from teaching dance at this time? So, I, I mean, I could be mixing my timelines at this point, but no, 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 no. I was. Jesus Christ, I was doing that. Dance so, was like, do a bunch of things at the same time. So it's yeah, like, well, I was still teaching dance. Like I was still working in the animation and game industry. That, this was like in 2000, I mean, 2008 to 2013 is when I was working into it. Like right after I graduated, I was I went straight into the animation game industry. Yeah, I worked on a, I, the, I tell people I, I, I worked as an animator, but it's be I technically did, but I, I I the position I did is more called rigging, which is the more technical aspect of animating, which is setting up the bones and the controllers for the animators, which also pays a lot more. <laughs> but it's also one of the processes that I liked a lot more than animating. But yeah, and I got to work on a, on a couple games some people might have heard of. I worked on Quantum of Solace. I worked on Silent Hill, Shattered Memories. And the last game I ever worked on, on was uh, Laura. No, was it? Sorry. Uh, Tomb Raider. The reboot, the first reboot game, and yeah. in terms of films, the only the I only worked on two movies because I, I, well, at least the how the studio that I was working with, or the animation house I was with, I just didn't like their their culture. But when I was working with them, I worked on the first Smurfs movie and the last Harry Potter movie. So, and then that was it. I was like, fuck this. I mean, that's amazing. <laughs> That's, that's amazing. And I feel like a lot of younger dancers feel like if they're pursuing dance, they have to stick to that. They've got to put all their eggs in that basket. But really, no, I feel like one great way to make it as a dancer is to have something else on the side that will keep you afloat while you pursue your career in dance. So yeah. how did that come about for you? Because you said you started right after high school to do this. For what? Animation? Animation. Oh no! After high school, no, right after I graduated college, I, college. I, was, I was able to get hired. Okay. Oh, so. you went to college. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I tell half the team to drop the, drop out half the time, <laughs> I tell every yes, I have a bachelor's degree. <laughs> Even though I tell everyone in temper to to, to to drop out, yeah. So I never took a break after high school. Like right after high school, three weeks, I graduate. After I graduated, I went. I started college right away. And I graduated right on my 21st birthday. And I was oh determined. Oh my God. But it was That's also. So where did you go? And what was your major? I, I, I went to Art Institute of Los Angeles, Cal Los Angeles. I'm oh, sorry, Los, Art Institute of California, Los Angeles, whatever the fuck it's called. But it, it's gone now. It, it's closed. Oh. Apparently, just the whole fucking school went through some fucking financial issues. It was fucking awesome. <laughs> Oh my god, that's terrible. That's no, like, terrible. Okay, my experience of it was great, but some of the branches and some of the other people's experiences were just terrible. And how they handled the exit of how everything falling apart, and the a lot of these kids being in like what the, like like I remember it happened like with right the semester or uh, the quarter after grad Stephanie graduated, people were like. Uh, the people at the school were flocking the dean's office, uh, trying to get uh, their transcripts 
because the school was shutting down and they're like no classes and all that. And these, there are these kids who are like, who put money into the school that, you know, and then sh- shutting down without notice. So oh. yeah, so that's why, like, that's what I'm like, you know, if that's what fucking happens, but cause they're a for graduated. So you're like, sorry, bye. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the thing is, okay. So I graduated, I was, I graduated on time. I like my, literally my last day of school was on my birthday. But it was also the same year the economy tanked. So <laughs> I remember like my, a lot of my teachers saying, good luck, good luck finding a job because the economy's dead. And in my head, I'm a fucking, you know, to- young 21 year old, like, uh, you know, economy, schm economy, <laughs> you know, like I'm a young buck, I'll figure it out. And, you know, thankfully I did get hired after, but I had no understanding of at that time of like, how like what a, a recession is and how bad it was and or anything mm-hmm. and i honestly don't think i truly thanks to my mom like she's an amazing she's an amazing woman like i don't think i ever felt the real hit of the recession because i didn't notice like the struggles and that's how i guess wow testimony of how great my mom how hard my mom worked wow so, yeah so it was uh and luckily i was able to fucking get a job right after college and then start working so wow, and and all all while dancing and teaching, <laughs> all while still dancing and teaching, and that's the thing too. While I was like my last quarter of school, like I faced so many people, uh, so many people telling me like, 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 what are you gonna do, animation or dance? You can't do both. Um, oh. One of my teachers said this. This one, <laughs> this one animator chick that that joined our animation, our our animation. Uh, not club but I, I guess group and then a lot of uh, a lot of us like oh she's cute and all that stuff and then what she said like oh like you can't do both the kind of condescending I was like no fuck this bitch i'm gonna prove everyone wrong i'll prove everyone wrong <laughs> of course of course <laughs> and then you know like that's where i got used to the idea of, like of you know because i don't know I, I feel like why can't you exactly you know, like why do you have to stick to one and all that stuff and you know it's i think i still believe that that you can get you can get both just not at the same time mm-hmm. so it's a, you got to be smart and especially and also like prioritize the thing in a sense that helps you know yeah. support yourself in a sense uh until while you're chasing that but I, that's the yeah. thing like i never really I never really pursued it dance that hard in a, uh, oh. to become an industry dancer. Like mm-hmm. after my first few auditions for an for agencies, I was like, meh. I, I, just, <laughs> feel, I, I just wasn't feeling it. Yeah. I don't know. I just like because I danced. I liked the community stuff because it was enjoyable, the support. But yeah. then going to these auditions, it was like in so so intense because you know this is like literally everyone at the same time being interviewed for one. Or a few spots yeah so yeah so it, it, it was a glorified hobby there you go so so yeah i would say some people quit because of the stress so do you feel like having made the choice to pursue animation helped you continue to enjoy dance uh, rather than having- yeah in a sense it became like okay this is like my I, this is what i need to this is what i'm using to support my dancing Though the thing, the drawback with working a lot in the animation industry is that it, at least the time I was in it, it's super different now. But I just, there was, for me, it wasn't the healthiest of habits that I had because a lot of sitting, very sedentary lifestyle, not that active. And you had to be like, even with the, all the dancing I was doing, it wasn't, it still wasn't that enough. I was gaining a lot of weight. So, <laughs> but yeah, like, and, so I forgot where I was going with this, but yeah, it just wasn't the healthiest lifestyle. And it kind of and it started showing in terms of like my performance with my dancing. Why you stopped? With, no, no. In the animation industry? No, it, it, part of it was part of it was knowing I was going to become a dad and realizing, mm-hmm. oh, my God, when I would work like 60, 80 hours, like during crunch time uh, a week. It was just crazy, and I I got to a point uh, where I was like, is when I heard, heard that Jordan was on his way, I was like, what kind of dad do I want to be? Mm-hmm. So I was like, 
you know, am I, am I, am I just going to show up tired and just give them presents or do I actually want to have, be able to spend time with them the way I want? There you go. So is this how vision paradox came about? Vision paradox came about like later I was, I became, I, <clears throat> man, I got into it because uh, I guess my quote unquote entrepreneurship journey started because of after I joined this leadership program. And I think that was super intense and it helped a lot in, in helping me develop, I guess, a lot of self-awareness and how I show up in interacting with other people. But then I also, and then I realized I was also really good at sales. So, so and then yeah. that's where I, that's where I joined us. I joined Herbalife and MLM, and I was like, yeah, like I can become like a <laughs> health coach and all this other stuff. And then through that, like, because I know, because I felt like there were gaps. I was like, don't you have to be like a nutritionist and learn stuff? So I started learning a lot of stuff. There's exactly. questions in my head, so I started learning things on my own, and I started, st- and and then uh, started actually training clients and all that stuff. Because I, you know, I think that's the thing. The, the the pitfall of MLMs is that they try to have you stick to their way instead of instead of yeah. questioning it. So I and you made it your own. I made it my own. And uh, what else was uh, there? Yeah, I, and they kept pushing me to create uh, recruit people, recruit, 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 recruit. And I was like, I don't fucking want to build a team if they don't want to be here. I want to yeah. sell. I'm good at it. <laughs> the thing is, yeah. like the the cut was the cut was shit. So it, that's not what I wasn't a fan of, and that's where I started realizing, oh, maybe I can start doing this on my own. And that's where I started having my own programs, uh, and started my own packaging and everything, which in, which yeah. just so happened to include the Herbalife products. There. Oh, so that's how it was. So for those who don't know. I wasn't on the train when Emory was doing YouTube, teaching tutorials, growing his fan base then, but I was around when he was doing this. And this dude, his face was like everywhere. It was I was seeing him through <laughs> Facebook, YouTube clips, and it was like you were a life coach. I, you know, I was getting all this advice left and right. I was getting emails, promo emails, like I totally forgot you did that. So Shit, yeah, that, yeah, dude. That, that really <laughs> yeah. So I was doing, I was hustling, and then even and what, <laughs> what 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 frustrated me with, uh, and at that point, dance was became more of a, a smaller thing. Um, yeah, was, that I, was, was a big one for you. Because I was Emory, the nutritional life coach. <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah. So, I was, well, that that information was very good. So, is there a way people can still go and find any of those videos? Oh any, yeah, you can. Coaching. <laughs> yeah, you like, you can. can people see this? You can still uh, still go through my YouTube, and if you switch the order and going from the oldest, you can see a lot of my stuff. <laughs> from like 2011 12 13 and i was trying to be super inspirational and all that stuff and i think i think it's a lot what a lot of people are doing because i wanted to i was aspiring to be a life coach but i had had an experienced life yet like you're a 20 year old telling what you haven't experienced real life yet i mean i'm pretty sure that there are that people have that have experienced like some real shit but there's also these these kids who are trying to become life coaches who haven't had real life experiences they haven't seen yeah. shit. They haven't seen the dark side, uh, but of a lot of stuff. Because you know, empathy in coaching people plays a huge thing. So, and sometimes, in the, for those, especially if you're young, the older people will just see that as patronizing. Uh, it's like, oh yeah, I, I understand. And like, oh, you fucking, you're 20 years old. You don't know what the fuck I'm going. I'm going through a divorce. Have you gone through a divorce? So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's where I kind of shifted a lot of things. Like, like I went away from the health coaching stuff because I wasn't a nutritionist or uh, or anything like that. So I felt like there were better licensed people for that, and the pay was shit. And I was also getting really frustrated with people not listening to me. <laughs> <laughs> like they were like you know you give people a plan and it's hard for them to stay a, to yeah. follow it because we're humans which is one of the, one of the reasons I prefer vision paradox because I can control everything but and then the whole uh, I went away from becoming a life coach uh, because uh, yeah I went away from being a li- life coach because at that time I hadn't really experienced life in a real way yet I hadn't gone to jail yet so. <laughs> uh, but yeah eventually oh, like, Lord. <laughs> eventually started vision paradox and like that a lot of everything these skills kind of realized like 
because I was pushing the social media stuff uh, through the health coaching and through my tutorials, I realized I can do this for other people. I got my first client, helped him sell out a, a show. And then and I realized I was like, sick, I can get paid for this. So. And who was this? Uh, it was for the dance theater company I was with called Antics. I joined them back in 2016. Oh, yeah. And then uh, we were going to go perform at Philadelphia. And we, I, I know I, I asked like how our ticket sales are doing. And they were like, so I, t- I took over and did like Facebook ads and some basic. It just was like before it was called influencer marketing. We did influencer marketing and sold out both shows. And I was like, sick. I didn't even, I didn't get paid for it, but it was cool to get a, a result to like, to prove mm-hmm. that what I did for myself can work for other people. So mm-hmm. uh, that's where I realized I started pushing it as a service. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, Vision Paradox started going from there around 2016. Yeah, 2016. And then I got my business partners around 2017. And here we are. Oh my God, is it going to be five years? Yeah, it is. 